Good afternoon, I'm Michael James and welcome back to Q News and some of our final RuCap interviews as we have hit the end of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under. Today we are going to be chatting with some of our finalists from the show. Now this queen we're talking to again. She has been a multiple appearance queen on the program, uh, most famously erupting from a pile of garbage. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome back, Art Simone. Hello. Thank you for having me. We're back again. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> I know. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> We're old friends by this stage, aren't we? <laughs> oh, no, right? Just move in. Um, now, Art, first of all, I must say, out of everything, you deserve the fucking Academy Award for the last time that we spoke. I tell you what, 14 hours did you do? 14 hours you had to sit there in that little room of yours and tell everybody and cry about how sad it was that you were no longer on RuPaul's Drag Race and you knew the whole fucking time mm. that you were going to be back there right to the end. But to be fair, it was very sad. So um, it was very easy to lean into that emotion. Um, watching the episodes back, I was it, it wasn't difficult for me to uh, channel those feelings again because it was like, oh, my God, this feels like shit. So, um, yeah, although I'm waiting for my Logie. Where is my gold Logie, please? Oh, I'll tell you what, you deserve one after that because that was very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Um, naughty but, me, naughty me. Was that hard that day? Like, how many times did you like almost slip up and you're like, oh, oh, oh? What did you slip up uh, and you had to get anyone to edit it out? No, nah, never, never, never. never. Oh, there's very strict contractual obligations on my behalf. So, um, with the uh, the the scariness of lots of things signed, it was very easy to uh, <laughs> to uh, go along with it. But no, but really, it was it was really hard, and watching your back was awful. So it was really easy just to um, tell the truth in that respect. I just didn't tell the whole truth. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, and yeah, look- if you if you're a bad liar like me, you just have to tell parts of the truth that's you know <laughs> like um yeah yeah and put put the rest of the way in a box beside one of those wigs in that room <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> now that like on top of it being hard to relive all of that trauma around being kicked off the show and then being around right back in um it was hard for you and we saw online um I suppose living out the the episodes after that with the the fans that had lots of things to say how did you cope with that uh, I suppose vitriol that was really floating around on the internet there yeah I think I like I copped it pretty badly um the 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 fans for lack of a better term are very yeah. passionate people and which which is wonderful like because without without fans and without the passion we wouldn't have the show but i think some of these people don't know when they take it a little bit too far um and when they need to realize that um they're watching a produced reality tv show they're not watching like the actual Olympics, <laughs> like, um, so, you know, there's no rule book for drag race and anything can happen. Um, and it was really hard for me because I've received hate my entire career because I live out my career on the internet and everyone has opinions, which is so fine. But for some reason, this just hit so differently. And there was, it was so hard and so fast, which is normally a good thing in my life, but this was not the type <laughs> that I liked. Um, and, and I, I, I felt, really hard because it was like d- misdirected anger for something that I couldn't change or do or didn't have a part in essentially um and it was really bad but I I've got a great support network of friends and family and um they they kept me going which was wonderful that's good did you just shut down off social media for a few days just to to get away from it all I mean I tried to but like just it, it it's a hard habit to break out of um mm. especially like like you know i've i've used so i like to deliver things that people want to see and what people like um i i've had my career online for so long and i like to produce things that people like i look i look at the fan response to see what people like so um i use comments and things to like alter the product i'm creating for people so i'm used to looking at things and it was hard to break out of it um but yeah, I did switch off for a bit, which was good. But every week it was the same in that it was really intense Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then by Tuesday, Wednesday, 
Thursday, everyone calm down. You could have a break. But those three days were like so intense. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. As it would be, as the episodes would get released um, at, in every part of the world, it would just, it was nuts. Um, but we got through it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and you came out on top. Um, well, oh, yes. at the top. Yes. Um, now, like, as I understand, because I've looked at some of the things you've already said, so you got packed up, had your cry, came back the next day, packed up all your shit from the workroom, went back to the hotel, they shipped you out to an Airbnb, and then suddenly, hello, uh, by the way, Rue wants to have you back again. Um, what, what, what was that reaction like for you to, to get that phone call after all of that? <laughs> I was <laughs> like, I the first thought was like, could you not have like told me this like before I packed everything up? <laughs> like, <laughs> but I, I honestly don't think they'd even decided. Um, I don't think they even knew they were going to do it because yeah, they fully eliminated me. And then I got this full phone call, Rue wants you back. And I was like, <gasps> and, I, and for a second I was like, should I do it? Because I don't know. I'm very upset at the moment. <laughs> but <laughs> um, then I was like, no, let's do it. I'm in a bloody foreign country. Please, let's just finish this thing. Um, but it was so shocking. Uh, and, and it was, I can't explain to you the amount of emotions I went through. And then to finally kind of work through all of those, I went through like the hurt and the anger and then the like bargaining. And then like finally was breathing. And I remember... <laughs> when I got the phone call, because I was finally like let out, I was like, oh, I could eat food. And for some reason, like, I was like, I really want to try Wendy's in New Zealand. So I was like eating this like disgusting, like chili fries thing. And there was this phone call and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, let's, okay, let's, let's do it. <laughs> and then I had a few hours and like got picked up the next day and um, locked back up again. It was so crazy. It seemed like eternity watching it because at home it was like two weeks essentially. It was eliminated a full week without me and then another week until I was back. Um, but it all happened so quickly. In that like, would have been like five or six days. No, it was like two days. Like, two days, boom, boom, boom. Jesus. Oh, yeah, wow. it was like eliminated, um, bumped out the next day and then got a phone call and was in like, yeah, that day or the day after or the day after that. It was crazy. Oh. <laughs> and was it your coming back or was it you, they'd like to give you the chance to come back? Did you have that definitive you are back in? Uh, yeah, no, I had that I was back in. Oh, I had that, that I was back, that Rue, that Rue wanted me back in the competition um, and that I was jumping out of a bin. That's, that's all I was told. <laughs> it was so short. But then like I was playing in my head being like, did I hear it right? Maybe I didn't hear it right. Maybe it is just a chance. Or maybe I'm just popping my head into scare. I, like, I, it, I was told that I was back in, but I didn't believe it until I was out of the bin, standing in the room amongst the girls. And Rue said, Art Simone is officially back in the competition. And then I was like, <gasps> okay, I did hear right. So um, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Amazing. Because, yeah, I, I, it would have been that uh, we, we all thought, and of course, hence the people carrying on, that you might have been, that, all right, everybody, let's vote one of the three queens out back in. So it must be good to know, yeah, all right, some degree of certainty, yes, you're coming back in. Get in the fucking bin. Get in the bin. Where you're going to jump out when Rue says trash and then you're back into it. Let's go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <gasps> oh, I love it. Now, track records beforehand, Queens come back into the competition and Queens sachet straight back out or not very long after. What did you think your chances were once you jumped out of that bin of, of staying as far in as you did? Um, I knew that there'd be a lot, like I said at the moment I jumped out, that there'd be a lot of targets on my back. I wasn't worried about how I would do, like perform in the competition because I had confidence in myself, but I was worried about what twists and turns they could use to almost pat, like give the girls the power to like kick me out. I thought that was going to be a twist at one stage or I was waiting for a double elimination or something to like, you know, we've given you this, but now um, that's going to happen. But even like when that, you know, right before the last episode, when, all the girls we had to say who we wanted to who should go home I was dead set that every single one of them would say me um and when they didn't I was I was so surprised but so happy because they obviously believed that I deserved to be there and, and believe that 
you know, the whole elimination shouldn't have happened in the first place. So um, that was really lovely. Yeah. And I mean, we saw some shade in, in other episodes that did feel quite pointed and quite negative, but I never really felt like we got a lot of really negative, I suppose, um, girls coming at you for that reason. I think that they did feel like, you know, you did have a place no, I think that seemed loving. That- yeah, there was a very general consensus that we were making TV and we knew we were making TV. Like, I remember when I first jumped out and all the girls, like, barking stuff at me because the cameras are rolling. And then, like, uh, one by one, a few of them, like, ran past me and whispered in my ear and were like, we're really happy you're back. And they would run over there and be like, you look like shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, it was really lovely. Oh, Got to make good TV. Exactly, and we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know, it, it it led for a great road to the finale, I suppose. I mean, you didn't end up in the bottom again, which is a fantastic thing. Um, and that talent show um, mm-hmm. was I don't mean, was, say it like that. How very dare you? <laughs> I will not have that tone from you. Thank you very much. When you put drag queens and say put a talent show on and your talent is drag and you can't do lip sync tracks, you can't do, like, it's a very tough parameters. Um, you know, that's what you get. Uh, a lot of us work in cabaret and and Spiegel Tents and Fringe Festivals, so I think that should lead into the talents. But uh, go ahead, sorry. Yes, no, <laughs> I didn't say it was bad. I thought it was very funny. I thought it was very amusing. And I thought it was very on point. It was art to a T. Um, mm-hmm. But I suppose why? And what were your other options um, aside from putting a meat pie in your whole fist in your mouth? Um, yeah, well, I, I think people get stuck on the fact that they think the talent was that, like, I was putting things in my mouth. It was a comedy routine. It was performance art. It was French clowning, um, which is a comment that Reese said, but it got cut out in the edit. But Reese was like, it was like really fabulous French clowning. Um, but that the the actual performance obviously had to get chopped up a lot, very heavily for oh, yeah, the, the edit for it to air. And and when it aired, not everything made sense and lined up. But there was actually a a story behind what I was doing from beginning, middle and end um, that didn't quite come through in the edit. But like, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a performance artist and I, I'm a clown essentially. So um, my my talent was a comedy routine making people laugh. It wasn't of eating. It wasn't, also, I didn't actually eat anything. Some people were like, you just ate. I was like, no, I spat it all out. <laughs> Oh, I, was sh- I was sure that we weren't seeing a part there where you were like spitting into a bucket because I'm like, there's no way she just swallowed that as well. Like we, that would have just been not pleasant. Well, the thing that they didn't with. show is that I could insert a whole meat pie in my mouth and pull it out in one, like in one, one solid thing. Like it hadn't been touched. Um, that was the skill. Um, but yeah, it was, my aim was to make uh, ruin the judges laugh and they were cacking the entire time. And here's a little bit of tea for you. Um, so the reactions you see from the talent show aren't from the talent show because we had to film it so much earlier in the day that Rue, Reese, and Michelle weren't ready yet. Um, so they watch the talent show, but they film their reactions later. So the one reaction that obviously didn't make it because Rue wasn't ready yet, but she was watching me the first time I pulled a pie and put it in my mouth. She was screaming. Like, no joke, was like, ah! And I guess I'm the only one that will ever know that because I was the only one on stage and the cameras went rolling on their side. But it was one of the best moments of my career was making like RuPaul squeal in horror, but then start giggling immediately after. It was so funny. (laughs) Oh, my God. But yes, I like the challenge show. Yeah, look, it was fun. And uh, to your credit, you weren't a queen who got up to do a lip sync r- routine that we've seen them do on other seasons with the talent show, which I was happy with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, and I think also my talents lie in, in entertaining a crowd on a microphone and working in a room. And I knew that wasn't going to be a, p- a possibility. And I also knew that would open myself to the uh it not translating at all through camera um you know we've seen stand-up sets done before and it's very easy to like cut out all the laughs and put some crickets on or or add some microphone squeaky sound effects that I didn't want to open myself up to that opportunity so I knew that at the worst case if they like had to chop up my show 
it would still be really funny watching someone fist their face. So like, <laughs> even if it didn't come across exactly the way I wanted to. So there was a lot of thought that went into it. Yeah, you could tell that it, it was very funny and it was a good show. So hats off to you. <laughs> um, now, we're almost at the end, uh, which is where you managed to get. What was it like, I suppose, for you being at the end and the show is wrapped and then trying to figure out if you won the bloody competition or not? Um, where did you think you were going to place and what was that weight like to get there? Oh, there was literally no concept. I had no idea. Um, even on day, like on the set on the day, we obviously all went through exactly the same thing. We all had positive critiques. We all got to film the crowning. Um, so I had no idea where I placed. It wasn't until we were starting to watch the, the episode air and see the storylines and, and see the edits where I could start as we got closer to it, kind of predict where I sat. Um, but I didn't really mind, like, I didn't lose any sleep over the actual placement after filming because I made it to the end and essentially that's all you need to do. Um, sure, the prize money is wonderful, the title is amazing, but, um, I, I, you know, I'm just so proud I got to the end and I got to do it all. So um, not too, yeah, didn't lose too much sleep over it. It would have been lovely, but... Um, I mean, we still don't have a crown here in Australia yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you make a really valid point. Like some of the most successful um, drag alumni in you know the franchise from around the world are the ones that use their profile to go and leverage it and go and do great things. You don't need to win the money. You don't need to have first place. You need to leverage this time on TV, get to the end, get as far as you can and get people to talk about you and know about you, which they've done. People have loved you. You're weird. You're quirky as fuck. You're gorgeous and talented. And that's what Australia got to see. So thank you for being able to come back and deliver that to us um, right until the very end. Oh, thank you so much. It was a joy doing it. And um you know, I'm just I'm just glad that I got to teach the world about Kath and Kim, Nunnies and Goonsacks. So I think we really just... <laughs> That's all that matters, really. <laughs> oh, really, it is. Those are some of my favourite moments. So thank you very much. It's much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, Art Simone, it has been an absolute pleasure. Um, everybody out there, make sure you go and follow her on all of her socials um, and uh, keep track of what Art Simone will be doing next. Now, speaking of which, Art, we have you coming for the tour, um, which is coming up in September. Also, we have you coming to Fluffy in Brisbane, where we can all come and catch up with you. Am I right? When are you coming to Brisbane? Uh, I'm in Brisbane in July the 11th. I don't know. I don't, July. Look it up on Fluffy, but it's July. I know whatever yes. Sunday is in. <laughs> look, I'm pulling it up now. Let's have a look. Uh, it is. I don't want to lie to you. People. It is the 11th. I got it right. It yes. It is. And then, yeah, then we have the Drag Race Down Under tour in September um, throughout Australia and October. October in New Zealand. Um, it's going to be very exciting to see all the girls live on stage. Yes, excellent. Well, you can go find the tickets to the tour online. Fluffy is the 11th of July. That is in Brisbane at Cloudland. And it is gorgeous. It's an amazing venue. Have you performed at Fluffy or Cloudland itself yet? No, I performed at the old Fluffy family, but I haven't been at Cloudland before. So I'm very excited. Oh, it's very gorgeous. It's very Melbourne. It's very... There's a big staircase. There's a big staircase thing I've seen. So I can't wait oh, to yes. fall down though. <laughs> 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 For a few card and oh, just a trip down the stairs, doll. I know, but it, I'll work it into the performance. That's all right. <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you very much, Art Simone. Um, as always, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel down the bottom. Leave your comments. Let us know how much you love art um, and all the rest of our queens. Um, uh, we will catch you around next time. I am Michael James for Q News. Have a fantastic day. See you, Art. Bye.